The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan with you with the weekly perspective for the week ending the 22nd of September, 2017. Well, starting off with Charles Hugh Smith, financialization and the destruction of the real economy. Uh, there is a uh, link here in this article to a video with uh, a great interview done by Gordon Long. I suggest everybody that has the time to listen to it. What this reminds me of is going back, and I'll digress, to Elliot Janeway talking about financialization and how it destroys an economy. He says you'll get to a point where basically we, meaning a metaphor for we, the entire population, one half on one side, one half on the other, are sitting across a table from each other trying to sell each other life insurance policies. In other words, a financial instrument that really doesn't bring any productive capacity to anyone. And this is basically the trend that's going, it's talked about in this article. Obviously, I won't read it to you, but it certainly does talk about, first of all, it doesn't really go into the basics, which is the fact that all currency is based on a fractional reserve system. So every dollar is really worth 10 when you reloan it and reloan it and reloan it. Mike Maloney does a great job on that and secret hidden secrets of money. But then when you have that dollar derivative, that gets hypothecated and rehypothecated into some type of currency transaction that goes into a futures market and there's an option on the future. And then there's a swap on that option and on and on and on it goes. So the financial structure is very, very fragile. And most that are awake and aware are well aware of this fact, but many are not. And the ability of the system to seize up is probably greater than most people truly understand. And sticking with the big picture for a while, this comes from Bloomberg politics, world leaders push more inclusive approach to globalization. Talks about Justin Trudeau and what he had to say on this interview, stating that trade leads to growth. That's a story of our world over the past centuries, and that's a good thing, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Wednesday at a Bloomberg Global Business Forum in New York. But that growth hasn't necessarily reached everyone. Well, basically, the big growth has been in the credit and debit, excuse me, credit and debt systems worldwide, as I just mentioned in the previous article. And there really hasn't been a lot of productive capacity that's increased substantially over the last several years when you look at, for example, food supply and how many people go to bed hungry on this planet every evening. So this is a nice rhetoric type of uh, a political mindset, you might say, with the United Nations and all uh, you know, wonderful leaders telling us what we should think. But the reality of the situation, of course, is there are very big discrepancies in the world, basically because of finance, financialization is one of the pro main problems. And also, of course, the cognitive map, meaning teaching you how to think about these things, that you're really not smart enough to understand the financial system and leave it to the banks, they know best for you, etc. And of course, the Federal Reserve basically said they're going to start to unwind their their balance sheet and sell off some of their assets. And of course, the metric that they use would take 23 years to unload their balance sheet at the rate that they stated. If you took the average of they're going to sell such and such amount, which is rather ridiculous. But here's an article from Market Watch, And the first paragraph is meaningful. The Federal Reserve prepares to begin pairing the size of its $4.5 trillion balance sheet next month. Analysts at Deutsche Bank this week warned what have been dubbed, quote, great central bank unwind, unquote, is one of several candidates for creating the next financial crisis. Well, what's created the, the 2008 financial crisis was lying by talking about what's going on with a subprime mortgage, toxic mortgages that were bundled together and, and classified as AAA rated. That was a lie. And then those things were sold to a lot of People on the other side, like pension funds, money managers, uh, 
you know, secure investments. After all, they're AAA. And the whole system is basically coming apart as we speak. Certainly not rapidly, certainly not day after tomorrow. But even this uh, market watch is pretty mainstream. And Deutsche Bank has it's got its own set of problems that we outlined here in the Morgan Report and many other places. Certainly is kind of the pot calling the kettle black when it talks about you know, a financial crisis being led by the Fed when they, the Deutsche Bank, if it were really marked to, to market, uh, they it could cause a financial crisis. But let me continue. So now I've looked at the macro picture. Let me speak a little bit about uh, where we at. Excuse me, where we are at. I'm a little tired. I came back from Stockholm, Sweden. And it was a, a long flight. All right. Dow transports rise to the highest level in two months. FedEx and UPS are hitting new records. Well, this has to do with the uh, Amazon trade. Certainly a lot of retail has been hurt very, very much. Uh, Toys R Us filing for bankruptcy. And Amazon is not taking up all that slack. I mean, there is a lot less spending going on in the economy. And yes, this uh, Amazon type phenomenon has taken a great deal of market share. Nonetheless, uh, an objective view would take uh, the fact that a lot of retail is suffering not only because of Amazon, but because people just are not spending. Um, the trucking index hit a new record, and the airlines seem to be oversold and probably are finding a bottom here. Continuing on, on just kind of the bigger picture, uh, we've got uh, the oil and gas index is trading above its 200 day moving average. Chevron had touched a three year high as well as uh, Conoco Phillips <clears throat> at an all time high. So the energy sector has certainly been moving up here of late. And as of a couple of weeks ago, the banks have been leading the financial sector higher, and that included the banks of Bank of America, JP Morgan, and Citigroup. The five year Treasury yield that clears the uh, 50 day moving average, and there's a seven to 10 year. Treasury bond issues are testing their support level. Semiconductors also are leading uh, the NASDAQ. So certainly a strong stock market still. I do not want to give the impression that I'm that bullish here. I still think we're touching new highs and they aren't going to go a whole lot higher. I'm cautious for the end of the month, which only has another week in September and the total month of October. And we'll have to wait and see. And I'll end with the precious metals, as I usually do. Uh, the Silver Institute just uh, put out their new Silver News. Certainly a lot of great articles in here. Silver-based microbot zap bacteria in the water supply. We've been talking about the antimicrobial properties of silver for a very, very long time. It's coming more and more to the mainstream. I've mentioned this in some of my lectures. I won't belabor it further. Riding with electron, excuse me, riding with an electron beam in silver for the first time, getting silver from rice, really, building nano silver structures with bananas. These are interesting articles, by the way. And silver heck helps to eliminate yoga roma, which of course is another biocide property. Uh, in fact, there are socks and underwear with silver in them to prevent, uh, let's say, the odoriferous situation with bacteria when you sweat. So I'm going to stop there with silver on to gold. Gold has done what uh, we gave to our members a couple of weeks ago with gold hitting about the 1350 level. I said that the thir breaking the 1300 level after three tries was significant. You can go back and listen to the old podcast if you want to verify it. I also said that I felt that we would see 1300 tested. It has been tested here for the last couple of days where it goes from here remains to be determined and i'm not going to give any uh data in the public domain that i wouldn't give to our you know paid membership first nonetheless uh, i think building cash in here is probably a good idea the dollar is certainly doing a rally that i forecast and i think you will see the dollar rally continue for a while longer so that will wrap it up for this week's weekly perspective i will continue to do these every friday or saturday uh, regardless of where I am, they won't always have a video along with them, but I will at least do the podcast. And anyone that's interested in this work, please pass it on and tell your friends. You can go to richesinresources.com. That's richesinresources.com, all one word, and pick up the report, 11-page report. I just finished and updated for September 2017.